Welcome to the Visual Flow Developing Primer. My name is Pi, and I'm gonna be your guide through this two video series that's gonna help you to get the most from your Visual Flow purchase. So first and foremost, I'd love to thank you guys for supporting Visual Flow Development Tools. And second, if you're still on the fence and haven't made the decision to purchase yet, I'd still say these two videos are well worth watching. And here's why. I think most of you from watching this two-part series is gonna learn a tremendous amount and you're gonna learn just how powerful this system is. But even if you get to the end and you decide that, hey, this system isn't for me, or maybe I wanna create my own presets, you're gonna learn so much in regards to just how to do that, how to create effective presets, how to shoot effectively, how to design a system that works and just how powerful raw processing can be. So either way, by the time that you get to the end of this, there's just tons to be gained regardless. So thank you guys for watching. Let's go ahead and dive in. I want this to be a no-nonsense series to get you guys up and running, getting the most from this system with as little time possible. I'm gonna divide this series out into two videos. In this first video, we're gonna be talking about how to shoot. We're gonna be talking about lighting condition-based development and how to utilize the tool as well as give you an overall workflow example. In the next video, we'll be diving in deep into local area adjustments and specifically how the retouching kit can enable you to do things in Lightroom that really you probably only thought possible in Photoshop. It's really gonna open up a lot of creative possibilities. Let's go ahead and get started with part one. First, how in the heck should you capture your images? When it comes to shooting, well, we have a couple different goals, right? One. We want to maximize quality and detail regardless of the camera make and model that you're using. Two, we also want to maximize quality and efficiency from our workflow system or our preset system that we create. So these are the two goals and we're going to do a series of steps in getting there. First, I want you guys to always shoot manual. The reason why is we want our exposures in each scene to be identical from image to image and the only way to get there is by shooting manual. When the lighting conditions change or when the scene changes, adjust your settings, but otherwise keep it the same. Two, I'd highly recommend you guys shoot raw, okay? These presets will work over JPEG images or any other file type, but you're gonna get the most from them. You're gonna utilize camera profiles and everything that we have built into the system by shooting raw. Number three, how the heck do we expose a shot? Okay, this is a tricky one because we wanted to develop a method of exposure that was easy to memorize. If we said in every single different type of lighting condition we're gonna expose differently, that's very difficult to understand and to do. So what we said was we're gonna base the development of our presets off of one simple method of exposure in every scene. And it's also gonna yield the best quality regardless of the camera maker model that you're using. And that is to expose to the left or ETTL in every single scene that you shoot. Here's what this means. I have here a raw file. Now, you guys can just pull up your own raw images to follow along, you don't necessarily need these. Uh, but what we're going to do is look at the histogram. This histogram, when we expose to the left, what we're saying is we want the shadows pulled all the way to the left edge without clipping any shadow details. So essentially the priority is to expose all the way to the left while retaining our shadows. So priority is the shadows. Then we're gonna allow your camera to pick up as much of the highlights as it possibly can. If you're shooting on a Sony or a Nikon or any you know next generation type camera, you might have tons of dynamic range and your camera will pick up everything. If you're shooting Canon or Fuji or older camera models or, or just camera makes that don't necessarily have as much dynamic range, then it might pick up a little bit less highlights and some might blow out. But either way, we're going to retain clean shadows. Here's why. So here's what it would look like if we were to expose to the left. This scene as exposed, everything is reset out. As it's exposed, it's a little bit on the bright side. If I press J to bring up my highlight and clipping alert, I can drop my exposure by a stop. Okay, I'm down one stop without actually losing 
any of the shadows. I have this one tiny bit right here that's starting to drop out. This is exposing to the left. Now, this is a Canon 5D4 or something, so this is the amount of highlights that it was able to pick up. If it was a Nikon D850 or a Sony A7R 900, whatever, it would be picking up everything. But allow your camera to do that. And the reason why is some people would say, well, I'm on a camera where I can expose to the right. I can do this. They're going to underexpose so dramatically that their highlights are all retained, right? Every bit of highlight is retained. But maybe on certain cameras, your shadows would look okay when you pull them up by two, two and a half stops. But on most cameras, your shadows are going to become grainy. They're going to be green. They're going to have weird color shifts. There's just all sorts of quality loss there. So what's the simplest thing? Expose the left. Keep as much shadow information as you can. Allow your camera to grab whatever highlights it can. And that's for each scene. So every scene is going to look a little bit different. So I'm going to go ahead and delete this because this isn't a good example of it. So I have a couple different scenes loaded. So this scene is kind of another high dynamic range scene. And if I were to expose to the left, it would look probably something like this. Okay, so this is about 0.7 overexposed. Going to this scene, this is not a high dynamic range scene. So in an HDR scene, you kind of have that U-shaped curve on your histogram. By the way, this means that on your camera, you're using the histogram, okay? So when I get to this image, notice that we're shooting kind of with the direction of sunlight. It's overcast. It's diffused. The whole background, everything is retained in one exposure. It's not a high dynamic range scene. So what I would do with this exposure is just push my shadows to the left. And again, I'm about a stop overexposed in this shot. This is a shot by one of our own, David Crew. This is a really cool shot, and I wanted to kind of highlight. Again, this is a scene that does not have a broad dynamic range. So you don't have a U shape. You have kind of all the detail here. Once again, we're a little bit on the bright side of this exposure, where I'd probably bring the exposure down to about maybe about negative 0.4. He actually has the exposure pretty spot on for this. And granted, it doesn't really matter if there's differences here. What I want to show you, because you can obviously adjust exposure in, in post, but what I want to show you is how the exposure is actually built into the preset for each of these lighting conditions. So let's go ahead and now create a virtual copy. Actually, before we do that, the next step that I want to say is just shoot with a neutral white balance, okay? What this means is we develop all of our presets from the standpoint of having a neutral white balance in that scene. The modern pack, which we're going to be demonstrating here, it is designed to have a warm look to it. So if you're already shooting your images warm, because let's say you like the way it looks out of camera, then when you apply this effect or this preset, they're going to come out kind of doubly warm, right? That's not a big deal again, because if we're shooting raw, we can just adjust that in post. But if you're shooting JPEG, you definitely want to shoot neutral. And when you're shooting raw, well, from a workflow standpoint, still shooting neutral is better. So what I would do on this is on an image like this, I would pull it down a little bit, probably about to like right here. On an image like this, shooting in camera, I'd probably bring it to something more neutral, like about right here. On an image like this, I might again bring it to something a little more neutral, like right about here. Is that a big deal? No, because again, you can adjust this in post. And I just want you to understand that this is the way that they're designed. If you still want to shoot warm because that's the way you like to show your clients or that's the way you like to see it, that's fine. Just understand that in post, you'll have to probably cool it off or warm it up depending on which pack you're using and where you're starting from. Okay, so with that, we're going to just line this up with one of the presets. I'm going to select all four of these and create a virtual copy. And so I'm going to select soft light. We're going to demonstrate all the lighting condition in just a moment. You're going to see that it automatically builds in the exposure adjustment. All we're going to do from there is adjust exposure, contrast, and white balance kind of to taste. And if we were close with our baseline exposure, it comes in and we just go, okay, that well, looks really nice. Like what I might do is bring the exposure down a little bit, add a little bit of contrast, and call it good. If I compare these two, they have the exact same temperature, exact same exposure, exact same contrast. Look at how big of a difference there is in that one click of that preset. So again, I'd get here, apply soft light. Looks great. I'd get here, go, this looks like an HDR. Wow, that looks really nice. Okay, I'd get here, go, this looks like an HDR scene as well. 
So that standard exposure adjustment is based upon a statistical sampling of similar images in that particular lighting condition. When shot exposing to the left, how much of an exposure adjustment is necessary? That's automatically built into the preset. That's important to understand. Will you have some adjustments here and there? Yes, that's why we're leaving you white balance, exposure, and contrast to adjust. Let's now go to part two. So now moving to part two, we're selecting the lighting condition that we're working in. And we have several different examples that we're just gonna work through. So starting with soft light, I'm gonna explain each of these and show you a few examples. So soft light is any type of soft and flattering light. It doesn't matter whether it was shot during dusk, in the morning, it doesn't matter if it's shade, window light, it doesn't matter whether it's flash and you're shooting and using flash to create a soft light. Soft light are pleasing light sources that are kind of the stuff that we often are looking for as photographers. So let's go ahead and look at a few images that are soft light. This is an image shot by David Crew again. This is soft light, most likely just kind of light coming in from the left side of these leaves. And what I'm gonna do is just adjust the exposure real quick as well as the temperature to see what our one click would do, okay? So for this exposure, I'd probably pull it down a little bit and I'd probably bring my temperature somewhere a little bit more neutral. Okay, click soft light. Looks good to me. Okay, one single click. Let's go ahead and go to this one. This exposure looks a little bit on the dark side. So I'm gonna go ahead and pull it up just a bit. Exposure looks good now, white balance looks good. I'm gonna go ahead and apply this. And the final shot looks really nice. Same thing here, this time our exposure is really good. We've exposed to the left, white balance, maybe a little bit warm, but it's pretty darn close. I'm gonna go ahead and click soft light. And once again, the image is finalized with one click. I'm gonna drop that down so you have a side by side, okay? So that's the beauty of this system. Our exposure, our color, everything, contrast, it's all wrapped into the lighting condition and with a couple tweaks to the way that we're shooting and shooting ideally, we come in with no work whatsoever. That being said now, let's go to the other scenes and what we're gonna do is just apply the image. We'll work quickly. I'm just gonna apply the preset and then we can always adjust you know, from there. So if it's a little bit bright, I'm gonna go ahead and pull the exposure down. Again, we're doing our best with the presets to really rarely ever touch contrast, right? Contrast, exposure, and white balance. White balance is as you shot it, exposure is left zeroed out, and contrast we're only touching when we have to minimally in the preset to leave as much room for you to adjust and fine tune contrast as you need. All right, so hard light is any scene where we have a hard and unflattering light source, okay? So this could be noonday sun, it could be just direct sunlight that doesn't look good, it could be sunlight coming through a window. Anytime you have an extreme highlight with specular highlights and extreme shadow, hard light is gonna be your go-to. So for this image, for example, if I go ahead and just create that virtual copy now, I'm gonna reset out the first one and let's just make sure exposure-wise we pulled it down by 0.5, right? So let's match that. So what you can see is the highlights are kind of being toned down where the specularity is being reduced. We get a little bit of extra warmth there and we're lifting shadows to kind of bring everything together. There's also a lot of work being done on the colors. Let's go ahead and do the same thing here. I'm gonna apply hard light. We're gonna adjust the exposure and I'm gonna pull the contrast down just a bit in this shot, okay? Okay, let's go to this one. Let's go ahead and go soft light and let's just do our, we might as well create our virtual copy and have each one of them be a, so this exposure, we're gonna match, check none, exposure, contrast, and white balance, just so we can see the same image. So you can see how bright those highlights are, how deep those shadows are, and how the preset is pulling everything together. Same thing here. Let's go ahead and apply hard light. We're gonna select both and make our tweaks so we can match and have the same exact contrast and and white balance. I'm gonna warm it up a tiny bit and look at these two. Huge differences. So usually we're shooting in these hard light scenes in journalistic environments where we really don't have a choice, right? We have to shoot those scenes. Um, or if there's a background that we really wanna have, like for example here, we really wanna shoot against these background um, 
and the light condition is not that great. Knowing that, we can basically just expose properly to keep all of our detail and then use hard light to bring out everything and really get to a pleasing shot despite the fact that the light on the face isn't that pleasing. Okay, let's go on now. Let's go to HDR. So under HDR, these are scenes that have very broad dynamic range, okay? So let's go ahead and just apply our preset to each of these. Create a virtual copy, apply HDR natural. These are generally environmental portraits, um, and we want to maximize detail in the shot. We want to reveal everything. I'm going to call it good actually right about there and add just a little bit more contrast. Maybe adjust the temperature a little bit and the tint just a little. Okay, that looks super nice. Now if we compare the before versus the after, you can see what that's doing. Let's take a look at this one. This time, let's go ahead. This is a perfect expose to the left example. What I would have done if I was exposing, if I was trying to get this right on point workflow wise, I would have dialed in a temperature and a tint that's just a little bit more on the neutral side, so about here. Now when I apply HDR natural, again, it's going back to those statistically sampled settings, right? Where it takes, for most HDR scenes, this is the amount of adjustment that would be needed. So all I'm going to do from here is just pull the exposure down a little bit, get a little bit more of a pleasing white balance right here and then adjust my contrast. And look at the difference between these two. This is just nuts. Same thing here, we, we already did this one in the last example. I would probably brighten this just a little bit, just because that's kind of my taste. I might cool it down just a little bit, add a little bit more contrast, call it good. Same thing here, this is good job of exposing. White balance looks pretty good, it looks neutral. HDR natural, one click, we're good. Okay, so that's it. Backlit, these are scenes that have flares, suffer in contrast. There's low contrast we need to compensate for. If you were to grab one of these images and just pump up contrast, you get nuclear skin tones, it doesn't look good. So we created backlit, okay? So all I'm gonna do now is same thing, just touch my three little adjustments. In this one, all I need is just a little bit of exposure. Let's go ahead and get our baseline. I'm gonna copy those settings so you can see before versus the after on this. It compensates for that flatness in the image without nuking our skin tone. Backlit, looks great. I'm gonna add a little bit of contrast, a little bit of, okay, so if I do the same thing here, look at the difference between these two. Okay, here's another scene, flare, low contrast. So this can be golden hour, it can be really anything. So I'm gonna apply backlit, select both these. Let's make our exposure contrast adjustments. I'm gonna bring down my temperature just a little bit. Maybe get a little more pinks in there. And that looks really nice. Now compare these two again. Huge difference. Okay, moving on, we have flash. So this is again one of those kind of, if soft light is not quite giving you, you know, the amount of detail you'd want, flash kind of says, well, this is for when we're shooting flash that's a little more dramatic. The flash power is a little bit higher. What it's gonna do is compensate for those highlights. It's also gonna bring a little bit more shadows back into it. So by clicking flash, we're gonna bring shadows back. We're gonna pull the highlights just a little bit more and get to a spot that's a little bit more flattering for heavily flash photos. So again, for something like this, whoops, I click backlight. We're gonna click flash. Now I would just adjust my exposure a little bit, add in a little bit of contrast and warm up the image, okay? And we get to somewhere like here, and if we compare that to the original, oops, I clicked on pastel pack. <laughs> the pastel pack is not one that we've released yet. So let's look and click over to flash. The pastel pack we're still working on. There we go, now the colors look right. Okay, so I, I went and clicked plus 25. And then I'd probably go about there on the exposure. So let's just match those. So now you're looking at equal images. The only difference here is just that preset. Okay, same thing here. I'm gonna go ahead and apply flash. Pull down the exposure a little bit. Bring down the warmth a little bit. So, so much of, of white balance is really kind of to taste and what you prefer. So here's the before and after in that one. Okay, tungsten. These are naturally warm environments. Usually it's when we're shooting indoors, we have those orange indoor lights, and it oftentimes blends with other colors. We get a lot of color shift, and even when we take a white balance read, 
it doesn't quite look right. Our skin tones end up looking too pink. So again, I would say start with a neutral white balance. The exposure here is decent. Let's go ahead and apply tungsten on that virtual copy. And now you're gonna see that the color palette just gets unified. So one single click and our color palette is unified. The skin tones look fantastic. Let's do the same thing here. Okay, I'm gonna select both these and actually fix my crop because I hate the fact that that's off. I'm gonna take a white balance read you can do this off anything that's neutral. So you can do it off teeth if the teeth are, are fairly white. Um, you can do it off anything that's gray. Looks like the background is giving me a little bit too much of a, of a pink. So I'm just going to reduce a little bit more right about there. Now from here, the corrected white balance, let's go ahead and apply tungsten. And I'm going to just adjust the exposure down a little bit. I'll probably cool it down a little bit. I would prefer a shot like this to be a little more cool. So now if we compare... You can see how all the colors are kind of pulled together. Again, this is another great example of tungsten. You're working in a scene like this. Okay, we apply tungsten. I like my tungsten just to have a little bit of warmth to it, so I'll usually add a little bit of warmth. But but look at the difference between these two. All the those kind of blues, they get neutralized a bit. Everything gets pulled together, the reds. Everything is kind of pulled in that nice modern warm palette. Okay. Now let's go into tungsten mix. These are scenes where you have tungsten as kind of like the dominant light or as a significant light in the scene, but you also have a lot of mixed light. A lot of times, like say for example like this, well, we get all this blue daylight coming through the background. This happens whenever you're shooting next to windows and then you have orange lights indoors. So when I try to fix this, it ends up looking just not good. So I'm going to create a virtual copy and go tungsten mix. And what this is going to do is neutralize all those blues. If you want to retain the blues, probably not the preset that you want to be using. Okay. So what I'm going to do is brighten this up now. And now you can compare same exposure, same everything. But you can see how all those tones get pulled together and it neutralizes the blues that really end up for kind of making for unappealing images, especially when it comes to skin tone, right? If I were just to warm this image up well by the time i get her skin tone to a place that looks warm the background is nuclear orange right so tungsten mix now i'm going to select both these and apply the exact same adjustment so you can see the exposure we're going to pull down a little bit i'm going to now warm it up we'll probably leave it about right there and now look at the difference between skin tone shadows background everything this image still needs a little bit of work but it's gotten a lot better with that. Let's go ahead and go to this side. This is another example. A lot of times when shooting um, tungsten at night, so if I were to create, uh, let's hold on, hold off on creating the virtual copy. I'm just going to select this, go ETTL, uh, ETTL on this, and then create the virtual copy from there. So you notice that the background just gets so nuclear blue, right? If I try to adjust the temperature just to get her skin tone to kind of fall to the right place, like something neutral, like over here. Just look at how blue and muddy and gross everything looks. So again, tungsten mix neutralizes that, right? We neutralize that, we create really nice skin tone. While if you look at the original, you can see these side by side. Okay, just look at the differences in skin tone on these. That's massive. This was shot at a fairly high ISO, by the way. If you can't tell. Okay, so that's tungsten mix. Oversaturated is one of these last resort kind of options, okay? So usually what would happen is I'd go soft light on import, and I'd say, hey, you know what, that looks pretty good. Or maybe I want to switch this over to flash just so the highlights are a little bit more uh, subtle. That looks really nice too. I wouldn't apply oversaturated to this kind of a shot because while there is a lot of oversaturation going on, it plays into the image and it's not overly distracting, in my opinion, especially if I were to add a burn to it, which I'll show you in a minute. But this image is distracting, especially if I were to get to the right exposure and kind of start adjusting for everything, bring in contrast. I mean, look at how nuclear these tones are going. Look at the skin tones. They're going crazy orange. So if I were to reset that, okay, actually what we could just do is just start with that same everything. Click oversaturated. What's going to happen now is it's going to really desaturate the image quite a bit working through again everything that we do is through hsl so it's working through the hsl to desaturate and immediately if i were to match these uh well just look at skin tone right off the bat 
so much closer to what it should be. Now if I were to get to the right skin tone, adjust some contrast in, maybe cool it a bit. Let's say I wanted it to be right here. Look at the background compared to each other, okay? So just flip back and forth between these and look at how we have this posterization from these blown out colors on this side, whereas this side is very nice, very neutral. So it's a last resort option, okay? So don't choose it on every image because it is gonna kill a lot of color, but choose it for those images that really have oversaturated colors. Now, green tint is another one of those kind of last resort kind of options. This shot really looks like um, a soft light type image, right? So I would start with soft light. And then what I would probably do is just adjust my exposure and see if I wanna you know, tweak my, my temperature a little bit and pull it down. And right here it looks good. But let's say that the skin tones, the skin tones here are okay, but we do see some green being reflected into all the kids' faces from the green objects around them. In this image, it looks fine. But in this image, if I were to apply soft light, you can see just how green the skin tone ends up being from all these reflected green objects. This is where I wanna use green tint, okay? As soon as I apply green tint and I zoom in on the face, You'll notice here that on the right side, we're seeing that green tinted image. On the left side, we immediately get a cleaned up skin tone. There's a slight sacrifice to the greens over here where the greens are gonna take on a little bit more of red hues to them. Is it gonna be noticeable for the most part? Not really. And it's a really great gain for getting better skin tones right off the bat. And if I were to be working on this image now, I would Say, let's, let's go ahead and just select these two. I'm gonna brighten this up, add a little bit of contrast, and probably go somewhere to about right here. Now, if you were to compare these two, this is soft light versus green tint, right? With the exact same values in temperature and everything. Let's go ahead and just take a look at, if we were to look at reset out with the same exposure and tint. So look at the difference between these. I mean, soft light is nice. The original is nice too, but look at how nicely the skin tones get cleaned up on that side. It's just it, it's just so much better of a of a shot. So any scenes that have green tinting, we want to use that that preset with. That could be fluorescent lighting. It could be indoors. It could be outdoors around nature. Anything. Now finally, black and white. Let's look at the black and white conversion. This is the standard Lightroom black and white conversion by just pressing V. If I go to our black and white, we create a black and white conversion for every preset pack that matches the style of that preset pack. So this matches the modern style. Now, if I were to make the same adjustments to both these images, okay, look at the difference between these two. It's a massive difference in black and white conversion. We get a such a better and more appealing look to the image on this side. So that's all of the develop side when it comes to lighting condition based development. And honestly, if you have any questions in this, just look at the little kind of tip that it gives you. So if we look, it says shade, overcast, open sun, environmental, low contrast, flare, daylight, indoor, with blue daylight, uplit dancing, you know, like it gives you examples of all these different kind of lighting conditions that you'd want to be using uh, these specific presets in. So now let's move on to part three, where we're going to go into the tools. The tools are really, really fun. And I'm just gonna show you simply how they work. Um, all we've done with the tools is built in a set of typical adjustments that we make frequently, starting with profile corrections. So we can either choose to have profile correction turned off, which is default, so this is off. We can either add it while incorporating a vignette. This is gonna do a post-crop vignette that sort of simulates a subtle lens vignetting. Or we can do it without vignette. Now on some images, especially for photographers that like to incorporate the vignette from their lenses, this might end up with edges that turn too bright, like for example, this image. So I would probably leave this just on standard with vignette. And what I would actually do is control that even further with a burn. So we have all of our favorite dodge and burn filters loaded up here. We have radial burns as well as graduated burns. So graduated is gonna be top and bottom. And if I click the graduated filter tool or press M, you can see what it's adding. So it's adding this top and filter, bottom filter that I can now just kind of adjust and place into position where I want them, right? It's a nice shortcut to have these presets because now I don't have to go to the right side, 
click one, choose a preset, drop it in, everything with every single image. So now I'm gonna also add a radial burn. So we're gonna do a radial burn full. I'm gonna press Shift M. That brings up my radial burn fill, uh, tool, right? So now I can just move this into position. If I do narrow, it's the same thing, just a more narrow version of that tool. It automatically has selected the burn negative 0.5. And at any point we can drop it in, hold down Alter Option, and click and drag left to strengthen or right to reduce, right? This of course depends on the preset. But you can click one direction or the other just to strengthen or reduce the effect. Okay, if I want to reset the graduated burn because I don't want that, I can click reset and I can control everything with just the radial burn. Now here's a little Lightroom bug and workaround that we had to do. When you apply a graduated burn, if you want to remove that with a preset, you do actually have to apply a new graduated filter zeroed out. So if I press M, you'll notice that reset graduated burn has two graduated filters or one graduated filter dropped in at zero. That's the only way to save out a reset option inside of Lightroom. So if that ever changes in the future, we'll modify that. But that's kind of a Lightroom limitation and a workaround that we created for that. Okay, so fun little burning tools that we can do, very powerful. Let's go through a couple examples of these. Uh, I'm gonna go back to just all the images that we kind of developed, and let's just flip through a couple. So what I might do for this image is if I were developing it, I would just grab a radial burn narrow or maybe a full, and I would press Shift M, bring that and drop that right over Ethan's face. By the way, I have to work my kids into every single tutorial. It's just a, it's just a thing. It's a dad thing, you know what I mean? Dads will know, moms will know too. Press Shift M. Oops, I accidentally pressed a different button. Drop that in, adjust the strength, alter option. Okay, this is how you can just really dial in and kind of pull. This is one of those great images that I would do the same thing with. So I would grab a, a radial burn, Shift M. I'm gonna grab that, rotate it, and place it right over the highlight on our face. Maybe make it a little bit more dramatic. And check this out. Now we're gonna go to the tweaks. I love these, all these tweaks are so much fun. But let's first talk about Detail Soften. Detail Soften is wonderful for close-up portraits like this where we wanna soften overall texture and detail without losing skin texture. So again, look at just how pleasing this image is becoming with just a couple clicks and using the tools to get to a slightly softer look, okay? Same thing here, I'm gonna pull up another image and I'm gonna show you how you can use the uh, the same preset. So let's go ahead and press Control apostrophe Command apostrophe create a virtual copy. You don't always have to do detail soften. On an image like this, it's a little more of an edgy portrait. We can give it that edge by clicking detail pop. And now it makes the details just pop and come alive in the image. And it looks absolutely fantastic. Okay, so detail soften when you wanna soften those details, you can do detail pop if you wanna increase. So this might be a good candidate for say a couple different things. Let's go to a radial burn narrow. Let's press Shift M, drop that over our subject's face. I'm gonna rotate it, okay, and increase the size of it just a little bit. And now I'm gonna increase the strength, and then we're gonna go to Detail Pop. Okay, press Shift M to turn off that little option. Now, if I like that, then cool. If it's too much for me, I can just reset the detail to go back to where it was. And I think I like it back where it was kind of a little bit better. I like it a little more subtle for this kind of a shot. We have other ways of painting in detail on our own. So that's detail pop. Next, I'm gonna demonstrate dark mode. Before I get there, there's a couple other adjustments that are really simple, really easy to understand on their own. Noise reduction, sharpening a grain. Anytime you wanna fine tune these settings, it's very self-explanatory. Plus is gonna give you more, plus plus gives you even more, then you can reset the mount. Let's talk about dark mode. This one's fun. So with dark mode, I'm gonna create a new virtual copy. I'm gonna reset this out. I'm gonna apply a preset. Now I can click into dark mode and what we essentially get is a dark version of this preset where we have really a secondary look to every preset in your preset pack, okay? A dark and moody version. Now we can adjust our temperature and tint and then we're gonna go into this deeper in the next video because we can select quick dodge and lift and watch this. 
I could just paint light exactly where I want it. And I'm going to show you how to refine this so you're not even going to touch areas of the background. Okay, so we don't have to sit here and worry about background stuff. I'm going to show you how to do this very simply, even though this is pretty simple too. So we can paint it off the background, but we can also have very fine tuning control and, and we can sit here and adjust and bring out and lift our subjects out of a scene in dark mode and get a cool, moody, awesome look to our images. You can do this over black and white as well. So if I create a black and white image, I'm going to go black and white and flip this to dark mode, we get this moody, dramatic black and white, okay? Dark mode is so much fun. This is another great candidate for it. Any image that has kind of a dramatic look to it, that has a direction of light, will work well in dark mode. So I could do this a couple different ways. I could start soft light and go, hmm, I kind of like that detail pop, and I also want to do dark mode. Automatically, we get thrown into dark mode, we would adjust the, the color and temperature, and then watch this, quick dodge and lift, we're going to, again, go into this more in a little bit. But look at the difference now between this versus the standard. This is the standard soft light. This is dark mode, right? Same detail pop, same everything. But we have two completely different looks to the image. And I think it's really fun. It opens up so much potential in the toolkit by giving every single preset another look. Okay. Let's finalize this video with part four. We're going to run through a workflow example and just show you how everything kind of falls into place and why we do what we do and really how fast this process can get. So what I want to teach you first is upon import, whatever preset you discover that you're using the most, I want you to set up an import preset where you apply that preset upon import. This can be from any pack. So choose from any pack, whatever one you feel like. But usually for most people, what you want to default to is soft light. So select soft light so that gets imported on every single image when you arrive in Lightroom. So what ends up happening is if I were to apply it to all these images, it would come into Lightroom already looking pretty polished. Like we see these images and we're like, oh, those actually look pretty darn good already. But for this particular scene, I do notice that we're shooting in that green fluorescent light, right? These are my kids again doing jujitsu. So for this scene, I'm going to choose green tint. Automatically, we get better skin tones. I'm going to take a white balance reading off the back and then get to the right place where I kind of want a neutral background. I want a little bit more contrast, maybe a tiny bit more exposure. Now, once you've dialed it in, you're going to select all the images in that scene. Press Control Shift S or Command Shift S. Click Check All deselect local adjustments, crop, and spot removal, because these are things that we generally want to apply on a per image basis, and click synchronize. Now you're going to understand why we want to dial in all those things, why we want to shoot manual, why we want to shoot raw, why we want to have control over, you know, getting to a neutral white balance and getting a good exposure, because now, look at this, all I'm going to do is cycle through the images, make tiny tweaks here and there because your exposure does change a little bit based on your feet position and based on your subject position in relation to light, even when you stay in manual, right? So all I would do is scan through these images and granted, these aren't all the images I would keep. I just want to show you a typical workflow. Okay. And just make minor exposure adjustments and I'm done. That's the power in a system like this. Now, should you want to use this system, then fantastic. We've spent two years developing it. So for the price, I think it's well worth what it does. But even if you want to create your own, I'm hoping you have a really great set of tools and understanding that can help you in creating your own system. Now let's go to the next video. Where we're going to dive into local adjustments, into the retouching kit, and show you just how powerful raw processing can be.